Before we dive deep in, something that's a little bit unique about my story as a, as a musician is that I'm a professional guitar player and I was born with one hand. When I decided that I was interested in learning to play the guitar, this, this was this like, I would even call it a calling over my life. It was so big and so deep and powerful. I had never even seen somebody play guitar with one hand before. It's going to have to become a completely new way. And as I have this opportunity to speak tonight, and I'm going to tell you this long story about guitars, I hope that I, I know that the group this morning was was a, a group of deep thinking students, right? So I want you to be thinking, how can this be actually applying to your life? Whether whether you love math or sports or music or science, what are these what are these stories about guitars? How can you maybe put this put your own story right into what I'm going to tell you, right? Because one of the key themes that I really want to stress tonight is God has been in my life before I was born, after I was born, today, and He will be there in the future. He abides. He's with me, and that He's been in every single step through people he's connected me with, through gifts that he's given me, through talents that I have, because he gives people talents that are unique. And I hope that that shines through and you can be thinking about that in your life. Amen? You feel me out there? Give me one of these if you're like ready to go, yeah? Okay, cool, I love it. Good to see you, I love it. Let's, let's dive in. Okay, so this story starts a long, long time ago, way, way back in 1985. <laughs> this is the year that I was born a long time ago. Before I was born, my mom and dad did not know that I was going to be born with one hand. And so from the minute that I came into the world, my mom could see in the, in the doctor's eyes above his mask that he was surprised and shocked and maybe even concerned at what he had seen with my hand. In fact, they didn't know if I was going to need surgery. They didn't know what had happened. So what happened was, is he called in this team of medical professionals, doctors, and nurses, and they rushed me to a different section of the hospital to prefer, perform all these tests. Kind of scary, right? And so from the minute I was born, my parents had all these questions that were swirling around in their minds. They were, they were worried. What happened is a few hours later, the doctor returned and he said, your son is healthy. He just happens to have been born with one hand. This happens to one in every many, many thousands of babies. It just happens sometimes. That was pretty much all the information that they had. A couple days later, they took me home. My mom was going to stay home with me. My dad had to go back to work pretty much right away. And so my mom was kind of wrestling with all these questions. She wondered, what would my life be like going into the future? Would I be bullied when I went to school? Would I would I struggle to find a, a meaningful relationship someday in my life? Would I be able to participate in things like sports or music, things that have been important to my parents when they were young? You ever think about like, like you ever start to worry about something that maybe even starts really small, but then it kind of like is like a snowball. You ever see that on TV or if you live in kind of a cold place and you can roll a snowball up and all of a sudden it's like this huge thing that started small? Right? So to raise your hand if you've seen something like that before, or you maybe felt that way. That's kind of what worry does to us, right? And I was only a few days old, and yet my mom was worried about my whole life, <laughs> right? But something really awesome happened. My pastor at my home church, where I grew up, would visit new moms in their homes just to say hello, to meet and get some cuddles with the new baby, right? And just to say hi. And when he went to visit, my mom relayed some of these concerns that she had to him. And he listened. And at the end, he just paused for a moment and he said, Katie, 
Have you ever stopped to think that God might be able to do amazing things with Tony's difference? This might not be something you have to be afraid of, but something that you can learn from, live into, grow from, minister within, and it's something that you can't even understand possibly the, the, what, the gift that this is at this time. And she said, honestly, I had not thought about it that way, but from that day forward, it was kind of one of those moments in life. You know what, if you ever have one of these moments where like you have a decision to make to go one way or another and somebody maybe even has coached you up to that point or like gives you some pointers that kind of put you in the right direction or maybe you, you read about a scripture in the Bible and you know you have to go this way, right? And she, she and my dad decided this was the path. And from that day forward, they really did encourage me push me to try things to to grow into hopefully one day a mature and confident guy and it started from those early days and that encouragement from that pastor the bible says how good is a well-timed word right how good is that great advice that comes to you at that time when you need it most right and so i it turned out i did love sports and music. I love to ride a bike. I love to swim, all of those things. But it was music that I mentioned was that special call over my life, right? Especially something that inspired me when I was 13 years old. I had a friend from school. His name was Max. And Max had this amazing talent. I call it a gift. Check this out. He could hear a song off the radio, and before the song was even done playing, he could play it on a guitar. <laughs> he didn't have to study it. He didn't have to spend a lot of time with it. I mean, songs are like three minutes long, right? So by the time that song was finished, he could play it on a guitar. And I thought, whoa, that is the coolest thing that I have ever seen. And I want to be able to do that too. How could I make that possible? <laughs> Is it possible? Yes, I, I believed it was, right? And so I started to get really excited about it. My friend Max and I started our first band. He was gonna be the lead guitar player and I was gonna be the lead singer. We were gonna ask some of our friends who were gonna play the drums and the bass guitar and we were gonna have some trumpets. It was gonna be awesome and we got started. But as that, as that band got started, I started thinking, wouldn't it be awesome if I could play guitar too? And I started to think about well, what would be possible. So the first thing I did, I didn't know very much about guitars. So I, I wanted to learn everything I could. So I, has anyone here ever like you, you get really excited about something that you're interested in? And then you go to YouTube and you find a video about that thing, and then you find the next video about the thing and the next video, and suddenly there's like two hours have passed and you watch every video you could find about that on YouTube. Yeah, I see some hands up. Yeah, you feel me out there? Yeah, I do that too, I do that too. But this is pre-YouTube. So what I did is I went to the library and I picked out every single book that I could find about guitars. I found the section in the library and there were quite a few books. So I found, oh, there's a book about who makes guitars and another one about who plays guitars and what kind of wood they're made out of, what kind of strings they have, what kind of electronics go on the inside that when you plug that guitar into a speaker, you can hear one instrument in front of 100,000 people. I got kind of deeply interested in guitars. And if you can picture me, I had this giant stack of books and I kind of like made my way over to the table and set them all down. And I started with the top and I started to flip through the books. And as I looked at all those pages, something struck me in the library. I saw that almost everybody who's ever played guitar plays like this. Imagine they hold the instrument with their left hand and they strum with the right. Can you picture that? Right? But in all of those pages, I saw three pictures that looked like this. Strum with the left and hold with the right. It's called a left 
handed guitar and it was like this huge discovery right if, if you ever watched a cartoon and you see a character that has like a one of those light bulbs that goes off over their heads when they have a, a big idea yeah you know what i'm talking about well that's kind of i i didn't have a mirror with me but i'm pretty sure that if i had i could probably had one of those going off over my head because it was that kind of big game-changing idea and it inspired me so the next day, I went to the guitar store in my town. I grew up in a pretty small city. I wouldn't even call it a city, it was a town. And when I went in my town to the music store, they had all these guitars on the wall that were for sale. Different colors, different kind of shapes, I imagine different tones. And even on that whole wall of guitars, remember I said left-handed guitars are rare? There was only one guitar that was a left-handed guitar. And I got excited when I saw it at first until I went up to it and I turned it over. They had one of those little price tags on it. And I turned it over <laughs> and it said $600. Now I know we have people here from all over the world today. So $600. Uh, I know there's lots of different currencies. Let's just say it felt like a mountain <laughs> to climb to be able to earn that kind of guitar. Make sense? It almost like deflated me for a moment. Like, how is this going to be possible? <laughs> but pretty quick, I thought, okay, what if I go to my mom and dad? Hey, mom and dad. Wouldn't it be awesome if you bought me a brand new electric guitar? It's only $600. Come on. They had, they had so many questions for me. Like some questions like this. Um, aren't there easier instruments to play? What about the trumpet or something like that? You know, um, that you could hold, you know, like with one, one hand that would be so, like, and I was like, no, no, the music I like, I like, I like guitar music. I need to learn how to play the guitar, right? We talked about it, we talked about it. And basically, like they weren't in a position to be able to just buy me a $600 guitar. It just wasn't what our family, that's not where we were. So they said, you know, like, if you're really serious about this, this is something that you're gonna have to to go out and, and earn and do, and figure it out. And I felt like they were almost daring me. Like, how bad do you want this? And I wanted it really badly. <laughs> and I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm actually really, really glad now as I look back at it, that they didn't buy it for me because it really pushed me hard into this next step. I had to get my first two jobs to save up to buy that guitar. I liked to play soccer growing up. Does anybody here like to play sports, soccer, baseball, basketball, whatever it is? A few of us, okay. So I liked to play soccer growing up. And I realized one day that the referees on the field actually were being paid to be on the field. So I started taking classes after school to become certified as a soccer referee so I could work on the weekends. <laughs> and I saved all that. And then I introduced myself to some neighbors who had some younger kids than me. And I said, I was a very, very reliable babysitter. And I started working on the weekends and I just saved and saved and saved for months and months. It was really hard until one day, I finally went back to that music store and I picked out my brand new Midnight Blue Fender Stratocaster, left-handed electric guitar, and I got to bring it home to my house and hold it and look at it and just reflect for a moment. <laughs> it was a huge moment. Do you ever have a moment like that? Like you worked super hard at something and you kind of come to the end of it. Maybe it was a test in school. Maybe it was, maybe it was uh, something that you worked really hard for, like I just described with the guitar. And you get to the end and you almost just like, you're kind of like floating for a moment right like it's just this like amazing feeling right and as i as i sat there and i looked at my guitar i opened up the case 
And it was so shiny and new <laughs> that I could even see my face in the guitar, like a mirror. And, and it was fun too, because it even smelled really good. <laughs> Has anyone here ever been near like like a uh, like new carpet or a new car or new uh, new shoes even like before they've ever been worn and they just have this this kind of aroma like nothing no one's ever used this before right well that's kind of what my guitar was like and I looked at it and I smelled it and I was excited but then I also thought okay <laughs> this is the start of a new chapter because now. I actually have to learn how to play this thing <laughs> that I bought. <laughs> so I picked up my guitar and I began. As I sat down to play, my first challenge was that I had gone to a music teacher in my community and said I was interested in learning to play the guitar. And he told me, that's great. I'm excited for you, but I don't have any idea how I would teach you to play the guitar. I, I, I just don't know how I can help you, but good luck. And I always like to tell that story to, to students because what happened was is I, I tried, real, I didn't get really angry at him. I didn't say, okay, there goes my guitar dream. I guess it's over, <laughs> right? What I did is I thought there must be another way. So I thanked him and I said, um, you know, just thank you for your time. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and find another way. And I made my next discovery. <laughs> another book. This book was really cool because it actually had pictures and grids of where to put your fingers on the guitar. It was called something like, like Bobby and Susie learn how to play the guitar. And it had these little cartoon characters in it. And they kind of like would point at the strings and the, and this grids in the book. And I would try and copy what I saw in the book. And I went to make my sounds and it sounded like this. nice but it's so so quiet <laughs> I wanted to sound like what it sounds like on the radio I wanted to have that signature Tony memo sound I wanted it to sound like whether whether I if somebody put me on on the radio that they didn't know if I had one hand two hands or three hands it just totally rocked right that was what I was interested in from the guitar so I started to think how could that be possible wait till you see this I can't wait to show this to you. I realized that day something amazing. I learned that I was born with one hand and a perfect guitar pick spot. I have a space on the end of my arm that is the exact size of this little tool. It's called a guitar pick and it's a tool that guitar players use to make more sound from the guitar. And I have a space that fits it perfectly. I was 100% made to play the guitar. <laughs> That's how it was designed. I have had that space on my arm my entire life, and I have never used it for anything but that. <laughs> wow. Now here's, here's the next thing. Even though that space was there, sometimes I'd go to my guitar to play and it would, the guitar pick would fall out of the guitar pick spot that I had and it would fall into the hole of the guitar. <laughs> so then I wasn't spending my guitar practice time learning cool new songs. I was spending it with my guitar over my head, trying to shake a guitar pick out of the inside. <laughs> thought there has to be a better way than this. <laughs> so I started to think, what if, what if I could build a special tool 
or a cast of some kind or a, a device that would allow me to hold that guitar pick more firmly. So I thought, what materials do I have that would make that possible? I became kind of like a, a scientist and I went and I found a, a an empty shoe box and I filled it full of supplies that I found like tape and glue and strings and socks and paper clips, everything that I could find that I thought might make my new guitar cast. And I sat at my table and I started to just build and create. It was a long time later that I found this. It's this really tough, extra sticky, extra strong duct tape called Gorilla Tape. <laughs> Has anyone ever heard of Gorilla Tape before? It sounds, it, all right, cool. It sounds funny maybe, but let me tell you this. I see some hands up. Yep, I see you out there. I see you, Gorilla Tape. Yeah, yeah. So I'll tell you this though. It's gonna sound funny, but just a few pieces of Gorilla Tape changed my entire guitar playing life. And I just wanna demonstrate what three pieces of a simple tool like this did for, for my guitar playing. So I'm gonna rip three pieces off this roll and I'll just take one minute just to show you how I do this. Two, three. I see some of you counting along out there. That's good. We're, we're building some math into the curriculum tonight. <laughs> Very good. Okay, now here I take that guitar pick and I put it back in that guitar pick spot. And I started to create. One piece goes here on the inside of my arm. This is where my elbow is, right? So I have just a little bit of my arm that goes past my elbow. That's what I'm working with here. One, that goes like that. An extra piece goes here on the outside of my arm like this. Just like that. Fold it over. Through lots of practice, I learned exactly how tight those folds should be and exactly how it needed to be to get the best sound from the guitar. And one final piece that goes here over my elbow like that. Now, you remember what my guitar sounded like before, right? This is what I could do with my new Gorilla Tape cast on. sounds a little different, doesn't it? Oh, thank you very much. I see some uh, some applause out there. Thank you very much. I'll give my virtual bow. Thank you very much. But thank you. That is, it's way different, right? <laughs> so remember, remember at the very start tonight when I said, I hope that you can be thinking about how to build your own story, your own passion, your own gifts, your own callings in your life right into this story, right? So maybe, maybe you're even wondering, why does this guy, Tony Memo, come into my North Star class tonight and talk to me for this long, long stretch about Gorilla Tape and guitars? What is this all about? So here is a huge, important piece of this puzzle that I want to share with you. Learning to play guitar was not easy for me. <laughs> it was so so hard. Even that thing that I was at calling in my life took a long time of developing the, the gifts that were given. Practice. Days when my fingers hurt because it feels funny to bend your fingers like that. Days when my guitar cast would fall right off the end of my arm. This cast that I built for you today in one minute took me eight 
years of practice to build the first time. Eight years to build the first time. So my hope with that story is to encourage you wherever you are today, thinking about where you were eight years ago, where you'll be in eight years when you take and you steward, it's a word for like care for, the gifts that you've been given and use them ultimately for the betterment of your communities and for God's glory in the world. Amen, you feel me on that? You still out there, North Star? Yeah? All right, cool. So, so really, these are really, um, really important things in life. And I want to just, uh, just kind of share a song with you that kind of wraps that whole story up. And it's a song that, let me, let me ask you a question. Have you ever had a song stuck in your head before? You ever get a song stuck in your head? One that kind of like you hear and it just kind of sticks with you. Like maybe you, it just kind of keeps popping back into your mind. Yeah, I see a lot of hands up out there. Okay, okay. So I get that too. And this is one of those songs. <laughs> this goes like this. I want you to sing it with me. We can keep our, our cameras on mute for now, but I want to see you singing out there, okay? So I'm going to teach you a new song. It goes like this. I am never, never, never gonna give up, never, never, never gonna give up, never, 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 never gonna give up. I am never, never, never gonna give up, never, never, never gonna give up, never, 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 never gonna give up. You wanna try that with me? I see some people singing already. Here, I'm even gonna put on some reverb for you. Ooh, how's that? All right, here we go. I am never, never, never gonna give up. Never, never, never gonna give up. Never, 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 never gonna give up. That's it, every voice. I am never, never, never gonna give up. Never, never, never gonna give up. Never, 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 never gonna give up. That looks so awesome on my screen tonight. I dedicate this song to every one of you, anybody who's working on something right now. This song is called, I am never, Never, never going to give up. In the heart there lives a call to no longer haul a dream that demands your all. It's the hardest, clearest choice when you hear its voice step up. truth the wise come to know. You get out what you put in, then come lose or win. Sing this anthem of the soul. Come on. I am never, never, never gonna give up. Never, never, never gonna give up. Never, 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 never gonna give up. That's it. Sing it. I am never, never, never gonna give up. Never, never, never gonna give up. Never, 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 never gonna give up. Whoa. Na, 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 na. Whoa, on your harder days when the trail you blaze is feeling more like a maze. There's a path where there's a will of the highest hill. Sing this anthem, keep the faith. Here we go. I am never, never, never gonna give up. Never, never, never gonna give up. Never, 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 never gonna give up. That's it. I am never, never, never gonna give up. Never, never, never gonna give up. Never, 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 never gonna give up. and strength gonna go the distance no matter the length gotta be what i am meant to be got a plan got a purpose got a destiny gonna be ready for anything that comes my way no rain will ruin my parade gotta get good at getting up when i get knocked down that's my anthem turn up that sound okay 
I told you, we want to get this stuck in your head. So let's sing it a couple more times. <laughs> so you remember it next week, next month, next year, anytime you're working on something and you need a little lift, let's sing it all together again. Come on, North Star, here we go. One, two, three. I am never, never, never gonna give up. Never, never, never gonna give up. Never, 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 never gonna give up. Yeah. I am never, never, never gonna give up. Star is so cool to see y'all singing out there. Yeah. Thank you very much. So good to sing with you today. <laughs> I love it. Oh man. I'm fired up. I don't know about y'all, but I'm I'm, in, I'm ready to go. So much so that I'm gonna sing one more song. And while I sing this song to you or with you, if you'd so join me again, that I want you maybe to be thinking about. Let's, uh, let's take some time in a moment and have a, a conversation. So we're gonna open the chat after the song. And I would love to, if you've been thinking about anything as I've been speaking, if you have a question for me, I'm not a particularly shy individual. I'm happy to talk about anything from my faith to some of the stories I've told you about having one hand and, and that, those stories and about the ministry that I do now, traveling around the world, helping people make music, no matter what they're, difference or disability might be. And so I'm happy to talk about all of those things. But before I do, I just want to sing one song to you and with you that is about the foundation in my life. I don't, I don't take another step. I don't breathe another breath. I don't sing another note tonight without my foundation. And that's what this song is. This is a song that I keep close with me no matter where I travel around the world. I always keep some songs close to me that can fill me up at the end of a big day. And this is one of those songs. Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense. Defense, my righteousness, 
sing with you today. Thank you, North Star. What a joy. <laughs> I love being here with y'all. I love being here with y'all. Are you having a, uh, a good time today? Learning a lot? All right. Well, I would love to open that chat up. Okay. And, uh, and I would love to hear from y'all. If you have, uh, again, a question or a, a thought, I would, I'm just going to kind of scan through that that feed and uh, and answer as many as I possibly can. Thank you so much. That was absolutely amazing. Thank you, Grace. Thank you, Sophie. Thank you, Judah. Okay. Um, Evangeline asked, "Is there a website or app we can listen to your music on?" Yes. So I'm a I'm I'm just about everywhere music is. I'm on Spotify and iTunes or um, Apple Music, we call it now. It's been iTunes, not been iTunes for a minute, but I'm on Apple Music. I'm on uh, my website is TonyMemmel.com. That's just my name that you see there on Zoom here.com, YouTube. Um, and I, I make music um, all the time and all over the world. Um, and that's a that's a that's my full time work and ministry that I have the opportunity to do. And so um, thank you for taking a minute to, to look that up and for sharing it with your family and friends uh, if it's something that you feel compelled to do. And um, thank you for the opportunity to share that today, North Star. I appreciate that. Um, I, love, I love how much passion you have for music and for just for everything. It's really a blessing. Thank you for that encouragement. I really appreciate that. Um, Daniel asks, are you on Amazon Music? I am on Amazon Music. That's right. Um, if you if you search on uh, any of your search engines or in any of those sites, you should be able to find some Tony Memo music in there somewhere. Thank you for your interest. Um, which countries have you visited? Addy asks. OK, so I've visited quite a few countries, as I mentioned. Um, as a touring artist, I've visited 17 and as a as a student when I was in college, I actually got a chance to visit even more. So I've been to something like 25, 27 countries around the world since uh, 2006. And in the last few years, I've been to Southeast Asia, to the Middle East, to Central Asia, to South America. So everywhere from Brazil, Uruguay, Paraguay, Panama, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, um, Azerbaijan, Georgia, Kazakhstan, Tajikistan, Cambodia, Taiwan, uh, Singapore, um, Malaysia, Indonesia, and Thailand, <laughs> to name, uh, I think most of them. And I've also traveled all over Europe too. That was when I was a student. So I've been to Italy and France and Germany and Ireland and England. Um, I love to travel. I, I, I love to meet new friends. I love to try new foods and I love to share music and, uh, and ministry with people. That's the heart of everything that I have the opportunity to do. Um, some more thank yous for, for sharing for sharing music. Emma asks, did you ever want to stop or quit? You know, I think that I, you know, I'm not superhuman. There are days where I where I feel really tired. There are days where I feel frustrated. There are days where where uh, and even seasons of life where it feels like a lot of things don't go the way that I would 
I would want them to go or plan them to be. I don't completely understand where God is leading me in certain times of my life, but I've also learned, and this has just come with some time and, and uh, maybe even I would call it just some maturity in my faith, is that I can look back at those times where I, where I felt like I was frustrated at something and I can see now when I look back at the ways that I was being led towards something that was even greater than I had even imagined for myself. My Tony memo, small, small vision for that moment wasn't even big enough to see where I was being led. So early in my music career, I didn't, I didn't understand why some things weren't working, but it was because other things started to move. I started getting messages from, from schools and churches and hospitals after I started making music that I hadn't even been reaching out to in the first place. They kind of started finding me and, and pulling me that way, but it was away from where my, my initial gaze was focused, right? And that, that was really, in the time, maybe even kind of frustrating, but really when I look back, I'm so glad that I, I didn't get it my way in that moment, that I was led a totally better way. Yeah, so there are times like that where you feel like you want to stop or quit, and I'm trying, to um, wrestle with that in the moment and to bring it to God in a, re in a respectful way, but in a way that is also try to, trying to ex express it through prayer, that this is something that is on my heart. He knows it's there already, <laughs> but just trying to, to share it that way. But also I try not to stay there. When we read in the Psalms, you see like at the beginning of a Psalm, David is praying a, a prayer of, of thanksgiving and joy, and then he's really frustrated in the, in the middle of it. And he's, he's saying, why have you, you know, why do I feel forsaken in this moment, right? But then he always comes back around to like, my God is good, he is here, he abides, right? And that just shows that the, there are times where it is sort of a roller coaster, but God isn't a roller coaster. He is firm, he's the cement that the roller coaster is built on, right? So just think about that, that in the, all those seasons, he is there, he is with us. And that's something that really encourages me in my faith, in my, in my work, um, in everything that I do. Can I ask where you live? Just general area. Yeah, I live, um, I live in Tennessee in the United States of America, in Nashville, the mu big music city here in the United States. And uh, I grew up in a, a state called Wisconsin, and I moved here um, in, tw in 2013 to pursue music uh, because it was such a, a big music city and I was starting to get invitations to come here and, and do things in my music career. So that uh, was a, a move that my family and I made at the time. And, uh, and now we love it here. I also spend part of my year in a place called uh, Brenham, Texas, which is right outside of Houston, one of the bigger cities in the United States. I work with a summer camp where I lead worship all summer long for people who have special needs. And we we host 48 campers a week with special needs. And then they all have buddies who come and, and volunteer with them from all over the country. And they have the most amazing week. We worship every night, all day long. We're outside, we're at the swimming pool, we ride horses, we're on zip lines. We do all this amazing stuff. And at night, we point, and, and in each of those activities and every night we point everything toward Jesus who designs each of us with those unique gifts and abilities, right? And uh, so that's, that's what I do. So I spend most of my time in Nashville, a lot of time traveling, and then some time in Texas. I know it's a long question, a long answer to a question that you probably thought was simple and it's all over the place. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm also wondering what countries you visited. Okay, so I went through the countries I visited. I'll, I'll scroll down a little further here. Uh, just followed on Spotify. Thank you very much for following. Appreciate that very much. Um, uh, okay, I can't help it. How bad does it hurt when you rip off that Gorilla Tape, bro? Christy asks. Okay, so was anybody else wondering this? How does that Gorilla Tape come off? Okay, so you... How many people here, y'all have been through this? Everybody, who's had a Band-Aid in their life? You, you cut your, your arm or something and you have to wear a Band-Aid, right? Well, I kind of think of this like a huge, giant, super sticky Gorilla Tape Band-Aid that I wear every single day <laughs> to play the guitar. But just like a Band-Aid, if you kind of run it under some water or something like that, it, it comes off pretty easy. So one additional point though, I only use Gorilla Tape on, on myself for this reason. 
I don't stick gorilla tape my, to my friends or to my to my wife or to my son or or anything like that. It's just for guitar playing. <laughs> just a little something I feel I should probably throw in there. <laughs> don't get any big ideas with the gorilla tape. Um, have you been to China? I've never been to China. I've been to lots of countries that border China, but I've never been there. Um, I have been to Malaysia was the next question. Yes, I've been to um, Johor Bahru and to Kuala Lumpur. Indonesia, yes, I've been to lots of cities in Indonesia. Um, Jakarta, Medan, Surabaya, Solo, Salatiga, Samarang. Um, lots of cities in Indonesia. I went on a big tour there a few years ago and it was awesome. Loved Indonesia. Amazing people, great food. Had an amazing uh, opportunity to share ministry there. It was wonderful. Um, if you have any children, do they share your love for music or seem interested in learning to play the guitar? It's actually funny uh, you should ask Ariella. Um, I have a son, he's three years old, his name is Theo, and Theo is, he's, he's an awesome little guy, and he has a lot of interests of his own, and I always kind of say that, like, whatever his passion is, so long as it's legal and upstanding, that I'll support that, that passion, but it is pretty cool to see that he, uh, he does have an ear for music, and it's so amazing to see, you know, I've been talking so much about gifts, check this out. Before he could even talk, he could sing. I would sing, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, to him when he was in his, his little bassinet. And he would mimic and mirror exact pitch with my voice when he was just a few months old. Isn't that incredible? It's amazing how early those things are, are placed in us, right? And, and the other day, he just went to the piano. I didn't even show him how to do this. He started playing the end of Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star on the piano. I never even showed him how to do that. It's pretty cool, three years old. And so I would say that he, and today he found, I, uh, you can see behind me, I have a lot of um, artwork that, you know, different uh, youth around the world have made me that I like to keep up for encouragement in my, in my home studio here. And, uh, I have one that somebody made me, it was a guitar, like kind of like a life-size guitar that um, is like a kind of cardboard cutout. And he found that today in my office and he was walking all around the house strumming that guitar. So I do think that music's gonna be a part of his life somehow in some way. Um, but thank you for that question. I, my family is, um, uh, is a, a huge support to me and we work together really. We, we do a lot of this travel together in our ministry. Um, and yes, I do have a wife as well. I'm, I'm married to my wife, Leslie. I met her on my first day of college, um, way back in 2004. Um, I was going to be in choir and I walked into the, the choir on the first day and she was already sitting there and there was an open seat and she said I could sit next to her if I wanted to. And I did. So I went and I sat there and we, we struck up a conversation and became friends. And a few years later, we got, we got married after college, right after college. Um, uh, Sarah asks question, have you ever been like told that someone was scared of you because of your arm? Like as a child ever looked at you and been afraid and told you that to your face? Sorry, I know that's a bit of an odd question, but I'm curious if it's ever happened to someone else. It has happened to me. It actually happens to be quite a lot because I mentioned I visit a lot of schools. And so I actually, even though it's it's uh, alarming, I also actually would say that I actually have come to a, a place in my life that I actually really welcome that, in, that encounter. And I'll tell you why. One day I was in a school having the opportunity to teach young kids and they were being led into the music room which was where I was set up for the day. And as the kids were walking in, one of them shouted, gross! when he saw my arm and you know, he was pretty little, probably first or second grade. And immediately the teachers went in to kind of remove him from the situation, you know, to take him out of the classroom. And I just said, you know, if it's all right, can he stay? And he, he sat down 
And as I had the opportunity to speak, just like we're talking here today, I said, I introduced myself. I said, I'm Tony Memo. I'm a singer, a songwriter, a teacher. I travel all over the world making music for people as a professional guitar player. I demonstrate how I build my cast. I teach them I'm never, never, never going to give up. And the whole class is singing. And at the end of the class, he's got his arms stuffed in his shirt, pretending to be just like Tony Memo. And so in that half hour, by not uh, maybe getting too frustrated or flustered in that first moment that I was hopefully able to kind of like even turn that trajectory. So maybe next time he sees somebody like me, he doesn't shout gross, but he says, I know somebody just like you. Have you ever heard of, of this person? And it's like, I look at it as like a ripple effect. I'm the first person that he'll encounter like that in his life maybe, but I won't be the last. And so if we can kind of take those opportunities and and just uh, live into them with that kind of, um, you know, maybe with some courage and, and kindness in that moment, that that oftentimes you can actually see great change in those moments. So thank you for your question. And um, definitely, I appreciate appreciate you asking that one. I'll, I'll do one more here. Um, I know we're coming to the end of our time, and this has been such a blast that just before I do the last question, just high fives to everybody in the zoom call today thank you so much for hosting me north star yeah yeah um let's do one more question and then i'll just say that if uh you want to collect some extra um, questions teachers or alan um, i'm happy to you know have this be the start you know we can we can connect beyond this i hope to be a, a resource to you moving forward and into the future um, um wherever you are in the world today so um let's do one more question here if i can find one um, uh, let's see. Yeah, so Evangeline asked, what, are you allowed to get your email to keep in touch? I'll pass that to the teachers and then they can kind of like, uh, you know, bring your questions my way. And of course, I'm on all those those music sites that I mentioned before and everything too. So I, I, I follow and monitor all of those myself. Um, and I think that might be the, the, the last question that I see. Oh, what do you like to do outside of playing and sharing music? Good, good question. Um, I like to do lots of things. I love sports. I still love to play basketball. Um, I love to cook. Um, my wife, Leslie, is a really good cook. And we try and one thing we do after all those travels that we mentioned is we try to come home to, to Nashville and then recreate those foods that we got to try all over the country and all over the world. It's one of our favorite things to do as a hobby. Um, so yes, I love, uh, I love those things. I like to read, I love movies. Um, yeah, all kinds of good stuff. I um, thank you so much for your, for your hearts, for all of these questions. And uh, I'm going to turn it back over to Alan now, but thank you again. One more virtual high five. I know we just did it a minute ago, but I can't get enough. I can't get enough. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. It's been a joy. I hope you all have a great day.